Hey folks, as you can see, we've got blue skies and it's not just about the weather, it's about the fact we've got no overhead pylons and power lines now, which is an amazing improvement. We're gonna show you today a little bit of the behind the scenes of what happened, how it was done, and also a few more questions and answers later on in the video about what it cost and who paid. So the first thing to happen was the cable got laid in the trench that we dug and I went through all that in a previous video. But then after that, National Grid showed up and they started doing some of the preliminary work. So here's a little look at some of those bits. Some of it was just shot on my phone because it was just stories on my phone at the end of the day. So on the first day, they brought a mini digger down and continued a little bit of the trench closer and also got the auger bit on the drill and drill these huge great big holes ready to accept the pylon so it's one of these each end of the field and they remain there ready for the Monday morning and whilst they were there they also managed to get all the poles and hardware delivered so I imagine it's a lot easier to work down on the ground than when you're up in a cherry picker therefore so they got all these hardware bits and bobs all secured to the poles so it was much easier I guess to to raise it as one and then put some of the other switches and larger items on as well. And again, all that was done on the Friday and then they could just hit the ground running on the Monday morning. So on the first and last day, they had a JCB on site and that was able to just pick up these poles, throw it over its shoulder and head down the field. An amazing piece of kit, it's basically got a huge strong wrist on the end of it and they can pivot and turn them and upright these poles ready to drop in. So with a little bit of kind of manoeuvring around the cables, of course all of this is dead at this point, they could uh, thread it up across and drop it down into that new hole. So everything was isolated, a pole further up the field and also uh, the other way, there was a switch, uh, I think two poles up which was what was going to be transferred to this new pole to make a switch at that point. Unlike fitting in a big gate post or something like that, there is no concrete involved here. It's simply a well-fitting hole uh, and the pylon has dropped in. So all of the strength from it really becomes from the tensioning of it being pulled by the stays in one direction and the wires in the other. And then once that was in place, it means that the whole of the, the kind of network going the other way down the fields was all taken uh, off that new pair of poles and all of the old cables can now be dropped to the floor. So they're slackened off and lowered down and then that section is now open skies. Any live work that was done was either done with a cherry picker on a smaller vehicle or this Unimog was able to get right up into the corner because in some instances they had to have a couple of guys up there. So that was a perfect vehicle even though it looked a little bit bum twitchy over in the corner on that steep bank. And here you go, here is the beast. It's back again to pull out the last two poles. So we've skipped ahead now. All the overhead lines are, that ran over the top of this barn which was really a, a health and safety issue anyway and would have been very problematic when we started getting things craned over the top of it in the future. But here we go, it just pulls them up like carrots, uh, swings them back, sits down on that bracing, and then it can go and be put laid down on the field. Okay, so now some of the questions. What were the most common questions to come up? Well, one of them, and the, probably the most common, was who's paying for all this? When we looked at this property and when we put an offer on the property, we knew that it was gonna cost a significant amount of money to remove the overhead lines that went over the top of the barn and were up here on the top paddock. And when we made inquiries to National Grid, 
uh, after purchasing it, uh, it turned out we're very fortunate that those bits were no longer needed. They were no longer going off to a further part of the network and the old supply that used to come off the last pylon and go underground was no longer there. So therefore they were redundant infrastructure and they were happy to get them removed because it's less for them to keep on top of. And you'll see in some of that footage, that last pylon just sheared off at the bottom and just snapped as the JCB picked it up. So it was rotten. They would have been then therefore replacing poles that really didn't serve any purpose. That was the span that went across here. There was a pole in the middle which was put in to lift the, the, the wires up higher when this barn was constructed, but they still clipped the corner. They still went over. And even though there was a six meter distance or whatever, it was not ideal. And if we want to work on that barn in the future, we don't want pylon uh, high voltage lines around. So they were happy to remove those two bits, which basically meant power was going to be coming up through all of these trees uh, in the neighbor's land, up to a pylon here, turning even less than 90 degrees and then going back down again. So I posed the question, can we just cut that corner and go pole to pole and keep it in our field? Which again, they were quite happy to do because it was removing pylons and overhead lines away from trees, which again is a bit of a pain. And then it was at that point I said, is it possible to put them underground? We did a bit of negotiating as far as we would do the groundworks and they would lay the cable. So it turned out amazing as far as budget went because we figured that we probably need to set aside 30 or 40,000 pounds to get all this removed up, just these bits up here. We'd looked at other properties in the past, barn conversions and more remote restoration properties that didn't have an electric supply some of those quotes were often 40 50 thousand pounds to bring a three-phase supply or even a single phase supply across several fields to a new dwelling or a renovation or restoration project so this situation nothing as soon as it's high voltage it is costly but if it's high voltage lines that happen to be old and unnecessary then you might just luck out like we did Another question which came up which people were quite surprised about is the poles. Uh, the poles they just offered to us and of course being here on a farm we can use them for lots of different things. In particular we want to build a couple of pedestrian footbridges that go across the brook and they hoarder. are long. What's that? I'm being a well-known hoarder. Uh, yeah, uh, I'm, I, not going to say no, I'm not going to turn down free materials. And at the same time they said do I want the galvanised steel angle which basically is the T piece at the top. And I thought it was a bit clunky and I'd just be ending up keeping it for scrap. Then they said, oh, well, no, you'll, they'll take all the little bits off. And they cleaned it all up by taking all the bolts out. And they've left these six, seven foot angles. And in the past, they've actually used them, or other landowners have used them to strap two pylons together. Instant bridge. So we're going to do exactly that. I think they left four or five of those pieces. So we should be able to create a couple of pairs and have these foot bridges put in over the brook. So there we go, it was a huge bit of work and at times there were perhaps 12 to 15 people here working. There were often over 10 vehicles. It was not your average sort of DIY project. Well, it wasn't DIY, but it wasn't even a construction project. This was big stuff, huge vehicles, a lot of, you know, just stuff going on. And there was other elements to the project that were not going on here, but there were generators filling the gap when they had to drop the network for other properties. There was other bits, going on a mile or two away whilst they had this down they could tie in other things so there's a lot of planning nothing happens quick so you need to think about a year ahead with any of this high voltage work and I, I know from previous comments there appear to be a few of our subscribers who are in the industry and experts in this field but well, not this field so I'm sure if there are any questions they'll answer them below there's lots going on here out on the farm so if you haven't kept up to date with DIY farm we'll put the link down to the channel below and of course now we've got the open skies we better go buy a kite. We'll leave it there. Thanks for watching. Remember, if you can, do it yourself. And we'll see you next time. Or well, don't do it yourself. Do not do it yourself.